let's talk about this um VAR and the incident that happened okay. this weekend where we saw um Manchester United, uh, Manchester City versus Aston Villa. We saw a disallowed goal for um, um, um even Aston Manchester Villa. United asked now there was a disallowed yeah, there goal. Was a disallowed yeah. goal, but why 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 is that this stuff keeps on happening in the English Premier League? You review a uh, uh, like referee making judgmental calls and we are not getting it right it's up to this moment this this kind of thing still keeps up happening and it's kind of like killing the vibe of the yeah, game yeah, i cannot yeah. tell me that i score a beautiful guy you tell me it's an offside and you go and check it and see that it's not an offside you still give it an offside call yeah like, and especially when um, there's a ne the next game comes and the, that similar there's a similitude of that exactly, situation yeah. and they actually give the goal yeah, so it's so actually painful it's, is there anything that can actually stop this thing from or call you know anything that the um mm. the Premier League referee board can actually sit down and actually discuss to stop this kind of thing because this thing is kind of killing the vibe of the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I feel there should be more um there should be more training. Yeah, uh, yeah. I know the PGMO uh, the yeah. Premier League uh, match official board. board yeah. Uh, yeah, the uh, they are they are they are top notch. I feel, but there's still room for improvement. Exactly. Everyone has to improve. So the referees, the VAM, the VAR, the assistant referees, they all need to go on retraining for this. Yeah. And I don't know if there is politics, they should stop it. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I, I don't want to <laughs> say what I, I don't have proof about. Yeah. If there's any form of politics, because it seems like it's favoring the big teams yeah. and the favorite teams. Yeah. So uh, against Coutinho, I, like... That should be a goal. That goal should a goal, stand. But they checked that it's not offside. Of but course. you've already blown your whistle. Look at Chelsea game against them. West, West Ham. Ham. West Ham scored a beautiful that goal. That was a beautiful like, goal. That was an equaliser. You denied them their, their, yeah. their points. They should have shared the points yeah. against Chelsea. But even um, against uh, um, Odegaard, Okay, that was a foul. That was a foul. No, <laughs> no, I saw the hand. I saw the hand. That was a foul. Yeah. I know you said because I'm a man. No, no, no. I saw the hand. Yeah, that was a foul. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not okay. my argument. Okay, that was a foul. Okay, now let's go into the Chelsea game where we saw Chelsea sack um, their uh, manager, Thomas Tunkel. Mm -hmm. Do you, is the is sacking of Thomas Tunkel, is it justifiable? Like, is, is it right for, like, is it, is, is it the right move for the club? Do you think Chelsea did Great by second Thomas um, Tuchel. Uh, yeah, um, I've been following Chelsea for a while now. Chelsea runs on that system, uh, on sacking coaches. So for me, that's the right call for them. And it works wow. for them. It has been working for them so far. When um, Frank Lampard was not giving them the results, he was sacked and Thomas Tuchel was employed. And Thomas Tuchel went on to win, win the, the Champions UEFA League. Champions League. Yeah. So it's just like rinse and repeat. Same thing. For AVB, when AVB Andre Villas Boas was sacked yeah, won, and yeah. Di Matteo um, Di Matteo, replaced over, him, yeah. so he, he won, won the Champions League. league. Yeah. So it's, it's a rinse and repeat situation. But for me, they need to go past that. Yeah. They need to go back past this rinse and repeat. If not, they will not have legendary coaches like uh, Asen Wenger, Jurgen Klopp, Guardiola, Alex Ferguson. Yeah. They won't have coaches that like that, and they won't be a formidable team. They will keep struggling and struggling and struggling. It's not just it's not just um, Thomas Tuchel that was sacked on Saturday. We also saw Scott Parker for um, Bournemouth leaving, leaving also when Liverpool tries them nice zero. They also sacked him. But I feel Thomas, um, the, I saw, I, I feel um, uh, um, Scott, Scott Parker, Parker only was um, uh, like extreme. Yeah, it was quite their, unfair. Yeah, their first five games was against, against the, the top big, five. Yeah, yeah, against the big uh, and top five. And... There's no coach that you ever employ in, no, in the no, Bournemouth no, no, no. that yeah, will do anything yeah. different. So, I, I, I'm not, I wasn't happy with the Bournemouth yeah. board for that yeah. because Scott Parker is a coach I've grown to love. He, when he was a player uh, uh, for Tottenham, yeah. I actually really loved Scott Parker. He's a very fine coach for me. And it's so unfortunate he had those tough run of fixtures. Yeah. But you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Now, uh, it's all results. Everywhere in the world, not just the footballing world, everyone wants a result, immediate yeah. result. Do you get? And so I'm also happy for my coach, Ten Hag, who was able to... Um, was able to reform his team who was able to get immediate result uh, result after losing his first two games so uh, i feel i feel sacking to chelsea is a good yes. call for chelsea because todd Bolly is a new owner yeah. replacing abramovich yeah. so for me he wants to he wants to um install his own his own principles in the team he wants yeah. to try something new yeah. and look at how they signed how many defenders they signed three right. Three oh, of oh. four defenders yeah. spending almost two hundred and fifty million pounds. Yeah. Do you get and look at uh, look at what is happening? Did 
you think it's Thomas Tunkel or this player don't really have the right frame of mind to actually play for this club? Um, I feel um, Chelsea panic bought. They were not ready to lose Rudiger. Also, they were not ready to increase Rudiger's wages. Rudiger, Rudiger was a very good player for them. Yeah, one of their so best. So, they shouldn't have lost Rudiger. So, they had to find a replacement in um, Koulibaly. Wesley Fofana also. Yeah. For me, Wesley Fofana is just like a repeat of Harry Maguire. I'm not... I beg to differ. And, and I'm not saying he's not good. Yeah. Do you get The same thing that happened to Manchester United. When they signed Harry Maguire, Harry Maguire max it should be forty million. So 40 for but I don't know how Leicester do, does it. They get bigger money for, Even for Lewis, average players. For okay, um, so on the next one, who do you think is going to replace this Thomas Tuchel as Chelsea manager? Mm, from the look of things, the coaches who are actually performing to a very great extent are, uh, for me, number one, Graham Potter, yeah. Graham Potter of Brighton. Graham Potter is actually sitting comfortably at the fourth position on the EPL standings. Yeah. So Graham Potter has had a very good run of games, beating Manchester United yeah. comfortably 3-1. So uh, I just feel... Had, just had just one loss this season. Graham Potter, yes. Graham Potter oh. is a, it's, it's a name that would be on, on the manager's books of Chelsea. Yeah. Um, also, Zidane is available. Pochettino, Pochettino, but I don't think Zidane would, Zidane would want to um, buy in because Zidane has a problem with English. Zidane does not speak English. Then um, Pochettino, Pochettino is also it has a very big shot to that because being sacked from PSG last season, he's currently out of job. I think those are just the coaches available now. Yeah, those are the coaches available. If, I mean, no if, coach. if I should advise, I, I, I will advise Graham Potter to remain as a Brighton manager. Don't come to Chelsea. You'll surely be sacked one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and because... seeing the fact that he's having a very good season, yeah. and he he stands the chance of taking Brighton to the Europa League. Yeah. So And that's a very big one to his credentials. But so... remember the statement. Money makes the world go round. Yeah. So they might Chelsea might offer him a mega contract and and he's telling um Brighton that hey, I need to go, bye bye, and he's packing his bags and going to Stanford Bridge.